Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at another printer. This is the HP NV Inspire 7955E. This is one of these all-in-one units that can print, but also make copies and scan, because it does have a flatbed scanner along with a document feeder on board. This one, they are gearing towards home users and have really upped the game on photo quality, which is something you don't typically see out of one of these all-in-one units at or near this price point. We're going to take a closer look at what this printer is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this printer is all about. Now the price point on this is $249. A set of replacement ink for their XL size cartridges will run you at about $80 or so. A little later in the video, we're going to talk about the economics of the Instant Ink subscription plan that HP offers. And that's a more affordable way to own this printer versus having to buy the cartridges every time. Now, I recommend inkjet printers for people that are looking for good quality color and photo prints and are printing on a regular basis. The worst thing about inkjet printers, though, is if you leave them for a while, they get clogged up and you've got to run the cleaning function and that uses up ink in the process. So if you are an infrequent printer, I would look at a laser printer which can sit idle for months and then just come right back to life like nothing happened. And that's always something to consider when you're out shopping for a printer. Laser is best for those of us who don't print all that frequently. But this one's great for an active family environment where you're always printing out stuff. And as you'll see in a few minutes, the print quality is really quite nice on this one. It's a little bit large as you can see, but that's hard to avoid if you want the full size scanner on board. Uh, what you're looking at here is about 18.1 inches this way, about 15 inches deep, and about 9.2 inches high. That is 46 by 38.3 by 23.4 centimeters. It weighs about 10 pounds. It's not all that heavy to move around, and they have a few different color accent options to choose from if you don't like what this one currently looks like. Now, if you don't need the document feeder, they will have a version of this printer without it. So it won't be as tall because this portion here will not be on it. The document feeder itself is not all that fast. It's pretty much what we've seen on other printers that come in at around this price point. It scans rather slowly as you can see here, but you can stack up about 35 pages and have the device scan them for you. It does not, though, do two-sided scanning, so you'll have to flip over two-sided documents and feed them back through to get that going. I'm going to show you how it interfaces with their mobile app in a few minutes. Now, the paper capacity on this one is about what you would expect out of a home printer. Not much, but adequate. On the paper tray here, which is front loading, you will get about 125 sheets of paper on the lower portion. This will take eight and a half by 11 like I have loaded in right now. You can do A4. You can also do legal size paper if you slide down this door here on the front to accommodate its added length. Additionally, you have a photo tray here for photo paper. I've got four by six sheets loaded in right now. It'll hold about 15 photo sheets. It'll also do five by seven and five by five square sheets if you're using that. So you do have the ability to mix and match here and the printer will decide uh, what tray to draw from when printing out a photo, which can be pretty handy, especially if you are not near the printer when you get the print going. There is not a manual feed on this though, so you will have to load all of your paper in through the paper tray. Now the setup process on the printer was fairly easy. HP has been shifting their strategy to an app-based one where the HP Smart App is what you use to interact with your printer. And so the best way to set it up is to use a smartphone, get the HP app, and have the phone prompt you through the setup process. Basically, you get it on your Wi-Fi, it updates itself, and you're off and running. If you don't have a phone, the app runs on Mac and Windows, so you can get it set up from a computer. Additionally, you can connect to it over the network, similar to how you'd connect any other printer using Windows or Mac OS. It'll just pop up on the list. If you're on an iPhone or an iPad, when the printer is on your network, it will show up as an AirPrint device, so you can just select it and start printing. 
It'll also work with Chromebooks, which should also detect its presence on the local network automatically. Now, when you first get your printer set up, they're going to ask you about joining something called HP+. Now, HP Plus is free, and it gets you a lot of extra stuff, but there is a catch, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's take a look at what the free stuff is first. So right out of the gate, they give you an extra year on your warranty. You also get six months of Instant Ink included. So you do have to sign up for Instant Ink, which is their subscription ink plan, and you will get the first six months free of charge. So you can pretty much use the printer as much as you want, and then you can roll over to a subscription plan at the end of that six months. This is optional though, so you can maintain HP Plus without an active subscription, and you can even decide not to do the trial right away and just get the HP Plus benefits. Uh, you also get some additional features in their smart app, including the ability to send faxes, because this does not have a fax modem built in, but if you have HP Plus, you can send a fax through HP's fax service, and you can scan the documents right on the scanner here, and then just dial the fax number on your phone, and it will just send it for you. You won't be able to receive faxes, but you can send them for free for two years. They haven't yet announced what it's going to cost after two years, but that's a good long time to get those holdouts off of the fax and onto something else. And you get a few other features in their app, and I would imagine as they roll out new features on the app, the HP Plus people will get those features over the people without. Now, the catch is here that you have to agree to use only HP ink cartridges with the printer if you are going to be an HP Plus. So what will happen is, is that the printer will inspect the cartridges that you install into it if you're buying them yourself, and if it's not an official HP cartridge, it won't let you use it. If you don't opt for HP+, Plus, you can use other people's ink cartridges, but you're not gonna get the features we just talked about, and your warranty will only be for a year. HP+, Plus also requires your printer to be on the internet, but it doesn't have to be on the internet all the time to work. It's gonna dial in and check in every once in a while, but if your internet's down, you can still print, but it will require you to set up an account and keep your printer connected at all times. Now next we have to talk about HP's Instant Ink subscription service. They offer a number of tiers and you pay a monthly fee and they will send you ink cartridges and meter you by the page. So for example, if you do their occasional plan, you can print 50 pages per month. If you go over, there's an overage fee that they tack on. If you go under, you can roll some pages over to the next month and you can check with HP to see exactly what the current costs are for those overages and how much you can roll over each month. And what they're gonna do is send you ink cartridges for free as part of the plan automatically. So the printer will order ink cartridges when it needs them, but you just pay the monthly fee and whatever overage charges you end up with. And I think dollar for dollar, this is probably going to be the better way to go especially if you are printing on a somewhat frequent basis. And the reason is, is that not all prints are created equal. So for example, this document uses far more ink than this one does, and HP is just gonna meter you on the page itself, not how much ink you're using. You're also not dinged on instant ink when the printer is cleaning itself out. A lot of times that will actually take a lot of ink to get those jets unclogged, and in this case, you're only going to be charged when you actually print something. So I think if you're a family that prints fairly regularly, Instant Ink is probably the way to go, especially given what these cartridges cost at retail. And the nice part is you get the convenience of never running out of ink because the cartridges will just get delivered. Additionally, this printer, like many other HP printers, does not separate the color cartridges into separate units. So you get three colors in the color one here, and if one of the colors runs out, uh, you would then have to pay normally to get another color cartridge to keep printing in full color. With Instant Ink, you'll just swap it out and keep going for whatever you're paying on the subscription. I've been hearing from a lot of viewers who say Instant Ink's been working for them, and you do have the choice not to subscribe, of course, and you could go with third-party cartridges 
if you opt out of HP+. So now that we have all these economic decisions out of the way, let's take a look and see how the printer performs. All right, so on my Mac right now, I've got two different documents we're going to print out, and we'll start here with just some black and white text, and I'll go to File, Print. Uh, the printer was detected on the network automatically a few minutes ago. I'm just gonna print out maybe five copies of the first page here, and we're going to run this just with the normal print setting, and we'll click Print here and see how fast everything pops out. Now this printer will print black and white in the normal mode at 15 pages per minute. So not terribly fast, but I think fast enough for printing out assignments and that sort of thing. If you have a color document, it'll print at 10 pages per minute. But you can see just how fast these documents spit out here when you just have a simple black and white document to run. And I found that even in this mode, the print quality on text is exceptional. It's pretty much on par with a laser printer, in my opinion. Uh, you can see a closer look at what it looks like here with a macro shot. So I was very pleased with the overall print quality, even without going to the slower, better quality mode. Now, while the scanner does not duplex, in other words, scan on both sides, the printer will print on both sides of the paper. So I'm gonna click print here on that same document we just ran. And this is a two page document. So on the other side, it will flip the front page around and print on the back. So watch what happens here. It's going to print out our first page and then it's gonna suck it back in and print on the other side. Now this on instant ink would count as two pages because it's basing it on the number of pages, even if it's on the same sheet of paper. So as you can see there, it just sucked in the paper and now it's printing on the other side. And now we have a document that has printed on both sides of the paper. All right, next up, we're going to do a color document here. We'll just run the first page. What I like about this document is that it's got everything. It's got graphics, it's got photos, it has text. And I'm just gonna print this out in the normal mode. We're not gonna select the best mode here. And let's see how fast this will print out by default. And we'll also take a look at the quality. One thing to look for on this document is that in these areas of solid color down here at the bottom, you typically see a lot of banding when these printers run in their default mode because they're trying to print out more quickly than it would in the higher quality mode. And as this comes out, we'll see what it looks like. And I found in some earlier prints that it actually does a pretty decent job of avoiding some of that banding. I'll give you the overhead view here and then overlay some uh, photos of what this looks like. And I'm just not seeing the banding here. It actually looks really nice. And I found that going to the best quality doesn't improve things all that much, especially when it comes to the text and the graphics on the page. The photos look a little bit more detailed, but I think for most usage, you can leave it in the default setting, get that 10 pages per minute or thereabouts, and not give up all that much quality in the process. It really looks good. So let's take a look now at printing photos. And I've got this photo of one of my daughters that I shot with my SLR. And I use Apple Photos, and this is actually a raw photo that was pulled in uh, from my Apple Photos library. And if you are on Android, you can pull in your Android photo library much in the same way. Now this has a feature that allows for two-sided four by six prints. And you need to use a special paper for those two-sided prints, namely their matte photo paper. This is a box of paper that they sent over. And as you can see, it supports two-sided printing. And what we can do is print the photo on one side and then some text on the other. So let's select that two-sided option here. By the way, you can print border lists at any of the sizes that the printer supports up to eight and a half by 11. And we're gonna do a four by six here. I'm just gonna edit this photo a little bit and crop it in. So let me just grab my crop here and do that. This won't affect the image on my library, but it will crop in the photo a little bit. I could probably do better, but let's just run with it. And I'm gonna click done here, and that will save the image for the front. Uh, for the back, you can see by default, it prints out a little date and time, but we can do more than that. They've got a bunch of templates that are seasonal. So for example, you can have it say birthday here. You've got some holiday stuff as well, and you can pick out what works best, or you can just go with some basic stuff here. I think what I'm gonna do is just do maybe, I don't know, uh, love you, and I'll put the date at the bottom. So I'm gonna click done here to lock that in. Click done again, and then if I go over here to text, I can add the date, and today is the 17th of November. So I'll just do 11, 17, 21, hit done and I can move that down. I can adjust the text size also if I want. 
I'll click done here. Now one thing that I have found with this, so let's go to the print section here, is that you want to pull this up and first of all make sure it's printing in color. Mine keeps going to black and white and it could just be a, a bug in the app. But the most important thing is to set the print quality to best because I found for photos they really look better with best. It adds a little more contrast and they look a little less blown out and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. It's very subtle on my cameras but I can notice it in person. And I'm just going to click print here and it'll just give us a warning about the paper and now the printer will begin its printing process. Now the photos of course will take a little bit longer to print. They will also consume a lot more ink because they are covering the full page with it. So if you're printing those big eight and a half by 11 borderless prints, that is going to burn through those ink cartridges. And that's again, another reason to look at instant ink because they're only going to look at the page and not the total coverage on the page. So we're gonna let this here print out and uh, we'll come back when it's done. All right, so it is done printing and it looks pretty good. I have to say my cameras do blow things out a little bit, but I found that the uh, quality of these prints looks really close to the original, but it looks closer when you run these uh, in the best mode. That of course will take longer to print, but the quality difference is noticeable in person. But I was quite pleased with the uh, detail of this. The color is again, very close to what was on my phone screen initially. And I found that this would certainly pass muster with the grandparents. Now this is the front of course, and on the back here we have uh, that template and the text that we added to it as well. Takes about, probably about two to three minutes to get this thing fully printed. It'll print the back first and then waits for the ink to dry and then sucks it back in and reverses the process. But for an all-in-one printer like this, it looks pretty good. And for a side-by-side -side comparison of normal versus best, I've got this photo that I printed out earlier. Uh, this one on the left was printed out in normal mode. This one on the right was printed out in best quality mode. And as you can see, the one on the right just has a better contrast ratio. In person, it has a lot more detail as I'm looking at it. Uh, so I think the best mode is what you want to go with whenever you're printing photos because there really is a noticeable difference, more so than my cameras can convey here on screen. So overall, the print quality, especially photos, I found to be very good on this device compared to other multifunctions that come in at around its price point, including some from HP. It's just a very nice quality printer. Now, as I mentioned, you interact a lot with this device with the HP app. And what we can do, for example, is initiate a scan from the flatbed scanner or the document feeder just by tapping on printer scan here on my phone. And what I can do here is set it to photo because I've got two photos loaded up on the glass right now. And if I click scan, it's going to initiate a scan over the network and deliver this image to my phone and I can make a PDF out of it. I can crop everything out and go from there. Uh, the scan quality is decent enough. If you've got a bunch of prints to scan into uh, your computer, you could probably get that done here. There are of course higher quality photo scanners available, but I think for most purposes, social media, prints and otherwise, this should be more than adequate for that. And it's great to be able to interact over the network uh, with your phone, tablet, or computer in that way. Uh, you can also scan documents with the phone, with the camera on your phone, and then print them out if you want. On the front of the device here, you do have some functions for doing copies and scans. So if you have the software set up on your computer, you can actually scan to the computer just by tapping on the scan button here. Likewise, if you wanted to make a copy, you can put your document in the feeder here at the top, click on copy and you can initiate a copy without having to load up your phone or anything else. Just hit the copy button here, it'll scan it in and print it out. Now I found the printer isn't all that noisy compared to others out there, but there is a quiet mode that will reduce the noise somewhat. It wasn't a substantial difference between quiet mode and regular mode, and I found it printed more slowly when quiet mode was enabled. I did pull out the ink cartridges to see if I could scan still without the ink cartridges installed, and it let me do that. I, of course, can't print without ink cartridges installed, but scanning at least appears to work when you are out of ink. And overall, I found it to be a very good printer for what it is. We've seen a lot of these multifunction all-in-ones, and the photo quality has never really quite been there. 
This one really delivers nice photo quality and really nice document quality, even in its normal mode. So I think if you are printing documents, normal mode is fine. Do the best mode for the photos, and I think you'll have a very good experience with this. It kind of works well in a household and kind of delivers, I think, everything that people might be looking for. And you have to decide if the economics of HP Plus and Instant Ink makes sense for you. And hopefully, I was able to adequately explain the pros and cons of all of that. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.